Hey there everybody, today we're talking about Noctua products and we have two types of products right here, uh, well, at PC Crazy Channel. Now, today we're going to start with the NHL965. This is the tower CPU cooler for, I would say, low profile or SFF builds, small form factor builds. Uh, the thing is, it has a 65 millimeter clearance, uh, well, the cooler height is 65 millimeter, so uh, that's for a really tight spot. Uh, as you saw in the past video, uh, I did the uh, Loki Ghost S1 and this uh, cooler is going into that case. We're going to test the temperatures, you're going to see the temperatures and everything for Noctua NHL965 with the, uh, for now, the Intel Core i5-8600K. Uh, After that I'm going to probably advance the processor and get a stronger one, even though we are talking about the Z390 board. But nevertheless, then after that uh, I'm going to test with uh, two smaller, thinner, thinner, sorry not smaller, they are still 120 millimeter fans. We're going to talk about the NF812-15, uh, so those are 15 millimeters uh, thickness and their PWM and we're going to place them also in the Loki Ghost S1. But let's start with the unboxing, I'm going to show you a bit uh, with the products because I'm really impressed with their packaging, without a doubt, I mean... So here is the accessory box, uh, you have the thermal paste, you have the uh, this is the small screw screwdriver, you have the low noise adapter, you have the Intel and AMD uh, mounting systems. Okay, that is for the NHL965 tower cooler. Now let's open the box. There we go. Now it's, this is uh, really, uh, let me just close this as it was. Now this is going to be really interesting because look at this. It's like a flower opening. And this is the cooler guys, this is it. You have the cover here for the part that touches the processor, uh, IHS. And here it is, the standard colors of Noctua, so we have this is brown uh, rubber dampening uh, pads uh, on each side and you have the standard uh, uh, cream color I would say and you have four pipes going through each side of the cooler uh, to transfer the coldness to the processor uh, let's uh, see the I mean of course it's a uh, four pin PWM but uh, it's nicely braided the only where you can see it is here it has uh, four uh, well, colored cables. The fan here on top is the NF uh, A914 PWM. Now, the specs for the fan uh, are maximum speed is uh, 2500 RPM plus minus 10% uh, and the max rotational speed with the LNA. So, that is with that cable. Where is the cable? Oh, yeah, here it is. So, uh, ma uh, maximum speed with the LNA is uh, 700 uh, RPMs lower, so that's 1800 plus minus 10%. Then we get to the maximum airflow, 57.5 cubic meter per hour. Uh, maximum airflow with the LNA, since the RPM is lower, then the maximum airflow with it is 40.8 uh, cubic uh, meter per hour. Uh, maximum acoustical noise for this fan and I have to say I'm impressed is 23.6 decibels and maximum acoustical noise with the LNA cable is 14.8 so uh, 700 rpms lower you get almost 10 decibels lower. One thing they did uh, mention here, uh, they actually wrote it on the box here as uh, some main features, uh, the compatibility with high profile RAM there is no problem whatsoever because as you can see it's nice and small, it doesn't uh, have any issues with for instance very very high profile RAM like Team Group Excalibur or something like that. Uh, it's also very um, I would say uh, connectivity accessible, so all the connectors that are around the CPU are easily uh, accessed 
when you place the CPU tower cooler on the motherboard and also uh, it is compatible with all the graphic cards while well, PCI Express on the mini ITX boards. I think this is enough information for the introduction uh, of the NHL965 CPU tower cooler from Noctua. We're gonna go into testing, but first I'm really curious about the fans. You can open the fan box from the both sides. You can check the crucial specifications here. Well, basically, you don't have any fans that have all these specifications. So uh, these are 15 millimeter slim design as I already mentioned. They have a flow acceleration channels, which are some additional channels on the end of the, as well as here on the NH uh, L9. So yeah, that is something cool. So these flow uh, acceleration channels are uh, used to uh, basically to alter the uh, flow distribution on the suction side of the blades and speed up the airflow so that uh, normal fans, apart from the normal fans, don't increase the vortex noise and lower airflow efficiency. So basically they added more airflow with these uh, flow acceleration channels. Uh, the things that you get with the fans are 30 centimeter extension cable, four pin Y cable. So that's a splitter, you have the low noise adapter, LNA. Okay, so let's open the fans. I think it's already too much talk. Uh, we have here uh, actually a nice booklet that explains uh, how to connect uh, the fans, how to actually attach them to the casing, uh, cleaning and maintenance, warranty, connection, installation and everything, but we'll get to that later on. So, as I mentioned, you have the white splitter cable, you have the LNA, you have the extension cable for pin, uh, and you have standard screws. And on top of that, NAAV3 anti-vibration mounts that you basically, you know, it's uh, it, it looks funny as it is, but when you place it in a small form factor build, you just cut the top uh, that you don't need. And talking about the slim design, this is it guys, this is 15 millimeters slim design, fans are looking really sharp as always and I think it will look great in the build that I'm doing right now. So guys, uh, let's go build the case, uh, do some testings and some final conclusion. Corri, corri, rallenta! We have lost objective Charlie. Basically, I'm really impressed with the temperature just because it's a small case and you have to take into consideration that the CPU tower cooler is just pushing the air from this side without any intake standard like a standard case or something like that. It's pulling the air uh, inside and directly to the CPU and these two fans are pushing it out. So basically Battlefield 1 without these two fans in addition to pushing the air out, uh, the NHL965 had 65 degrees, so Battlefield 1 medium details. Uh, adding two more fans we got really nice temperatures 58 to 60 depending on the load and stuff like that but I would say average 59 and then playing Battlefield 5 we had average 65 degrees 
with CPU tower cooler and with the fans, which is really incredible. And imagine using this instead of a stock cooler. Stock cooler goes up to 70, 80 degrees. With this, you can lower up to 20 degrees, which is really intense and really incredible. Uh, to be honest, I don't think you'll be using a stock cooler on 8600K or any other that are a bit higher uh, ranked uh, processors on the Intel range but uh, still uh, this is definitely a really nice thing to have and as you can see I'm going to use it constantly with my uh, new smaller build in Loki Ghost S1 since this is a nice small cooler, uh, low profile, uh, it can nicely fit in the SFF cases. It's really nice with seeing all these temperatures. And playing, for instance, PUBG, which I didn't record, I'm talking about my sessions that I do privately. Uh, so PUBG temperatures aren't going above 67. And I'm saying this uh, after four hours of gameplay in PUBG, on a low to medium settings depending on the details and stuff like that uh, so uh, 65 and then it goes up to 67 after three hours uh, I was playing Battlefield right now for hour and a half so there was uh, loads of gameplay loads of stress testing in uh, terms of um, you know not just playing for 10 minutes and then breaking it up because then it just goes up to certain temperature and then it you just stop it, there's no point in that. If you play for longer, of course, temperatures will rise because there's a consistency in the load on the processor. So the temperature might rise a few degrees even more. Uh, not that much, but you know, one, two, three, maybe even four degrees up than uh, playing for an hour or hour and a half. Uh, giving uh, all the information guys uh, I'll put uh, all that information down in the description so if you didn't catch what I was saying you can read everything below in the description about the NHL965 and in combination with NFA1215 uh, also I'll put the links below for both the CPU tower cooler and the thin fans I'm saying thin fans because they're 15 millimeters thinner, uh, well 10 millimeters thinner than standard fans and they are PWM and you have a splitter with each of them. Um, I have to say I'm really surprised when I was uh, building my build over here and when I was checking all the uh, cables you get and just incredible. So guys, thank you for watching. This is definitely a bit longer video but it's about review and testing and stuff like that, so it's kind of normal. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time, we have more things to do. Bye!